Hello people, welcome back to the Science Advancement our podcast show. It's your boy, Caleb Nemo, back again uh, with uh, Edmondson Fukue and Jones Mukuta. So we are back again. Uh, sorry, we've been actually not been having podcasts of late. I just have to understand there's some busy, busy changes, school and you know. But yeah, we're back again just trying to update you guys with everything that's trending um, in terms of, of science. But today we've got an interesting topic of discussion. We're going to be talking about climate change. Climate change. But what about climate change? So we're going to be talking about how climate change has negatively affected our country. But yeah. Uh, since I've already introduced the boys, actually going to go direct into the discussion. We don't want the podcast to be long. So, maybe what is climate change? I'm going to throw this question, and maybe this guy will just come in and explain to us what climate change is really about. <coughs> All right. So, climate change is basically refers to the change in the average climate conditions of a particular region, country, state, any region, particularly. So, the average, I mean, the change in the average weather patterns or climate conditions of, of such. Interesting. Uh, uh, climate change is defined in many ways. Uh, it depends with uh, what triggers your fancy. Just like you said, uh, I can also add up from that. Uh, uh, climate change is the shifting in weather patterns, and uh, it occurs in many ways. Or there are reasons which are result in climate change. Some are human interruption, and some are natural reasons. Yeah, that's what I can say about uh, climate change. Interesting. Interesting. So quite some good definitions from both ends. Huh? You can see that uh, the people that are on the podcast really know what they're talking about. But you know, I'm just going to be quick in this um, in this thing, you know, because I really want to know, okay, the ways for because we're not just going to talk about climate change and say, okay, there's climate change, huh? it's negatively affected our country, and just talk about how, but not offer solutions. So you know, one thing that has really uh, you know cast my attention of late when talk of climate change is. The, the load shedding, the, the power deficit that we've been facing as a country and uh, due to lack of heavy rains we've been actually, if I'm not mistaken, Zambia's actually experienced um, should be drought for like close to three, two years where we've been having a uh, power deficit, we've not been having good rains and you know, we keep on having load shedding and now, I'd really want to, to know from you guys, you know, okay, yeah, there's climate change, there's a shift in, in climate change in our country and we know, not, we've not had the rains that we would want to see and we all know that we depend on hydroelectric power. So what do you think would be alternative solution for us to overcome such um, occurrences in future? Because definitely there's not in climate change, five years, 10 years from now, but how do we overcome and still maintain our industries? Uh, yeah. I think we can pick it up first. Uh, all right, thank you very much uh, for that interesting question. Uh, I would say uh, climate change has really affected us uh, in many ways. We talk of food production and uh, actually hydro uh, power, yeah, like energy power. production. So uh, this actually uh, starts from the beginning. For example, if you talk of uh, hydro power, uh, apart from hydro power, the other alternative source which is uh, uh, most used in Zambia is uh, firewood. If you talk of charcoal, if you visit. Uh, uh, if you visit markets like, let me talk of Mutendele market today, in the morning, you'll find there are a lot of uh, uh, sack bags for charcoal. That explains how trees are cut across the world, which we call deforestation. That has resulted in climate change. You, you get the logic. There is a cycle, like the zoologic. That has resulted in, uh, that at the same time produces carbon dioxide. That eats up the ozone layer. Again, then again, the same carbon dioxide results in global warming. The same global warming dries up dams and results in power shortages. And it is because of the same power shortages that people are cutting down trees to produce charcoal for firewood. So there is that cycle which has resulted in uh, climate change. And it's like a, a cycle. Another reason is, uh, is uh, like, for example, in Zambia, we have uh, a coal power plant in Mamba. It has been in operation. And that's the same company where Zesco is uh, uh, buying electricity from. Yeah, like it's been operated. So that's uh, it uses coal, which is fossil fuel. Yeah, and the same coal produces carbon dioxide. And it is the same carbon dioxide again that eats up the ozone layer, resulting in global warming. And the same global warming uh, drains up dams. And the same dams result in power shortages. The same power shortages makes people start cutting down trees. And uh, uh, generally, so there's that cycle. I think, uh, uh, I, 
I'm going to question for you though. Come, come back up. All right, so I think just since you stated much about um, the, the effects that you just brought about, I think just to follow up on your question, we say how can we handle that? I think basically it's just re strategizing. We already have problems on our hands, so the best thing is just looking at how to solve such certain issues. Number one, if I look at one effect, which is deforestation, we strategize that. One tree cut down plants too. We've seen such policies in, implemented in different countries like Finland and other different countries out there that minimizes on the deforestation. Because if you look at that, it just doesn't affect the power thing. When you have bad rainfall patterns, that affects your, your, your agriculture sector. And that affect, affects your agriculture sector, it affects your economy. It affects your economy, your citizens are affected and deeply affected, by the way. So it's just basically implementing policies. We reduce on the cutting down of trees and also the people that are permitted to cut down city trees. We, we are aware that in certain countries, not everybody is allowed to go and cut down certain types of trees in, in particular regions. You do that, you're arrested, but I barely see any that in here. So it's basically putting in place policies that will help sustain the environment and will sustain the country. And also improvising, since we're at, we're at a place where we've had bad rainfall patterns, we've had more of sunlight right now. Yeah, sure. So the best thing you could do is improvise. Instead of sticking to the common hydropower, stick try try out solar. Exactly. At least that will keep you going in the meantime as you re-strategize because obviously fixing climate change is not a one day thing, it's not a one month thing. It's exactly. probably years thing. Yeah, so sure. you just have to improvise as well as put policies in place that will get you going. Yeah, then you could, yeah. Oh yeah, so you know, I love how you guys are coming out to just uh, bring out solutions and attentives. Huh? The explanation is actually the point. But you know, um, you've talked about um, how we should stop people from cutting down trees and stuff. And you know, I actually agree, uh, that's actually true. Uh, maybe you come up with a policy, maybe you should cut one and plant two. And I think one fact that we must come to understand is that no matter how much we spread messages of saying stop deforestation and stuff, that thing ain't gonna end because there's certain people that their survival depends on those same trees, exactly. you see? So, the, the best way to, to avoid um, a situation where we have such, uh, like, you know, this climate change and then we're having a power deficit, because if you tell me, one of the things that drive an economy, and it's, it's something that's overlooked, but if you do not have power, exactly. your economy can, it, it's one of the driving factors of an economy. Talk of the agricultural sector, talk of each and every sector in an economy, power is actually, it plays a pivotal role. So I think one of the things that we must do is look at other alternatives. Huh? Uh, look at solar. Uh, you can talk of wind. Sometimes you know, wind energy, um, in the absence of um, in the absence of uh, hydroelectric power, you can still have uh, uh, wind energy. You can, you can have uh, you know we're seeing what Rwanda is now doing. Uh, they're using is it methane gas now? They're producing uh, electricity with, with plants there, and they're doing bits. You know. So I think if we actually move in those spaces as well, we can can, can really improve. But yeah, yeah. Uh, fully agree but maybe before we just um, you know come to the end of our podcast and uh, you know I'd love to get uh, one or two views from the guys because uh, we really want to we don't want to uh, spend so much time on this but Edwin yes. you mentioned something uh, called nuclear energy and I think this is one thing that you're so passionate about yeah. and something that you would uh, want to talk about uh, I'm just going to give you like one minute okay. I want you to tell us why we should consider nuclear and yeah, people are going to ask questions like, how affordable is nuclear? Right. So maybe why do you think uh, nuclear is far much better than hydroelectric power? Uh, thank you very much for, for that opportunity. Uh, nuclear, uh, going nuclear as a country, first of all, is not as a way of eradicating other energy sources such as solar or iron, but rather as a means of sustainable energy mix to power Zambia's economy, which is in line with the seventh national development plan. So I, w I wouldn't say that uh, nuclear is better than hydro, no, but in terms of uh, climate change, which we are currently facing, I think nuclear can be another alternative which uh, uh, can uh, replace, or oh, not really replace, but which can be an alternative of energy generation. Okay. Yeah. I'm not trying to, <laughs> trying to stop you. Right. Okay, maybe just to give you confidence and just to let you know that you're free to express yourself. Okay. I'm, in my personal view, I feel if we were to go nuclear, that would actually be brilliant. And I, I feel nuclear is far much better than hydroelectric power. The question I'm asking is, why do you think nuclear? Because okay. it's not even something that can be put on debate. Nuclear is far much better than hydroelectric power. The question is, can we contain it as a country and can we manage to, 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 to bring in uh, nuclear sources of energy? All right, like, uh, since we are talking about climate change, so I feel nuclear is better than hydro because in the sense that it, it, it doesn't produce the greenhouse gases 
which uh, actually its up the ozone layer. It doesn't do that. Also, uh, nuclear, it requires a, a little amount of uranium. Like, it doesn't require a lot of uranium, but only like 20 grams of uranium can power the whole house for the whole year. So it's uh, affordable and reliable, so it's, uh, though it's expensive, but uh, I mean, it, it, it is actually possible and manageable. Okay, Jones. All right, so last few words. I think building up from what I said earlier, since I talked about policy, one of the most important things, something that I usually talk about, educate the people, educate the parties involved, because it would be really absurd if we were to talk about policy and yet people do not know the effects, they do not know the importance, they do not know the essence of whatever is happening and its, it's, it's results. So aside from policies, educate people, as well as implement resources that are needed. And yeah, infrastructure, policy, education, I think that's the way forward. Okay, so people, Thank you very much for tuning in. We're going to make sure that maybe we'll come back with part two of uh, how climate change has negatively affected our country. But yeah, we brought in some alternatives as well. But I uh, just want you to keep on sticking to our media platforms. Definitely something that's coming is going to be big. And uh, make sure you watch out. And yeah, some of the projects that we're working on that are going to be uh, in full effect soon. Thank you very much for the patience, for sticking around, for supporting us. Uh, thank you very much. It's been Caleb uh, Jones Mukuta and Edwin Sifukwe. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.